So today we're going to print out some lithophane floor lamps shades. And I had done a previous video on this and a commenter said, hey, you went about that the real hard way. And I said, hey, how so? And he said, hey, this is how so. So today I had heeded those words of encouragement and constructive criticism and I have produced this video. So let me know what you think of it and let's get cracking. So the first thing you want to do is take the shade off of the fixture that you actually want to modify. And uh, in my case, this is the floor lamp shade. So I took that off, got some measurements on the basic size and then tried to replicate that. So I went just right into Tinkercad and I made it the correct diameter to the shade that it was, uh, the stock shade. Just cut the bottom off and add a, uh, a flat surface so it can mount. Then just add the hole the same size, the dimensions that you got from the other shade. And so you can see that I cut the top off of this. Um, that's because the lithophane is going to print as a cylinder and we can't have the bow to the outside. There are ways to make a lithophane go to a globe. RC Life On has a good video about that now, but um, that's trial software and then you got to pay like $300 a year to use it. So unless you're actually making money off of it, it's not really applicable for me. So I just like doing this. It's free, it's easy, and it works. So once you have the the base lithophane worked out and you have it the way you want it set up, now you have to go in and try and determine how to size it correctly. So we have the diameter of the shade that we want, but we need to know what the circumference of that area is. So the circumference from diameter, right? And that's pretty simple to do. You can either do the calculations with math, with a pen and paper, or you can enter the 21st century and just Google it, which is what I do. And then just find a circumference calculator on the interwebs there. And so my diameter is 233 millimeters. So when I put it into the circumference calculator, that's 732 millimeters circumference. So the perimeter of my lithophane is going to be 732 millimeters ish, right? So now we take that circumference value and we're going to apply that from millimeters to pixels. And we're going to put that into a, a GIMP document. GIMP is just a freeware version of Photoshop essentially. And when you open up GIMP, you can tell it to size a specific size of canvas, right? So we're gonna tell it to size to the dimensions that we have set for our circumference and our height, right? So we know that we want our cylinder for our lithophane to be a certain height. We're gonna set the dimensions in GIMP. You can select it to millimeter. And in that case, then you just select it to millimeter and you make your dimensions that high in GIMP. So what you end up with then is dimensions in GIMP that are set up to be the same size as your finished lithophane when you wrap it 360, right? So your circumference will turn into the correct circumference when you extrapolate that lithophane out, right? So then the next step is to go into GIMP and you're going to want to fill that space, that canvas that you set. You want to fill that space up with different photos. Then you can do different transitions and everything with those photos to blend them together, make them a little bit different, um, make it look more like a finished product. There's all sorts of different tips and tricks that you can do in GIMP. That's not really the purpose of this video, but you can find them online. There's blending tools. There's you know all sorts of different types of things that you can do within GIMP that actually make it look blended together and produce a final product that you would want to actually print off instead of having each individual picture like I've done before. And then another trick that you want to do is because we're going to wrap this 360 degrees, you want to have half of that same picture on the other. So when you're touching on each side, right, it's going to complete a full picture and you're going to have no seam where that picture wrapped around. So then all you do is export it from GIMP into 3dp.rocks. 
Uh, it's a lithophane software. We all use it. It all works great. And then you just put that into your slicer of choice. There's a few settings within 3DP rocks that are pretty important to get. You want to turn it into a positive image from a negative image. And you want to make sure that you have an, it set to the outer curve for the model. And you want to set the maximum size as the circumference of your model. We made the lithophane itself three millimeters, right? So the lithophane itself is going to be six millimeters thick. So three millimeters on, other side, on either side. So we want to subtract six from that number, put it into your slicer, and then go ahead and print it off. See what happens. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Appreciate it. Let me know which one you like best. I like uh, the dog one because it's my dog, but I know you don't probably have any real reason to like my dog, so I would assume you like a different one. But let me know in the comments. I really want to say thanks to Bo Jin for commenting about how to make the lift fanes better. If he didn't say anything, I would still be just piecing them together and they look just normal. This blending technique makes them look great. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Okay. You ready? Alright, you gotta go. Hey, see you down there, Red.